In this video, I will show you how to install the Ubabuga text generation web UI locally on your own machine. If you want to run open source large language models, this is the best tool that you need to get. It supports a large number of LLMs out of the box and is relatively easy to set up. So in the rest of the video, I will show you a step-by-step -step installation process and then I will show you how you can actually install the Wakunia 33B the 1.3 version model with this. For this video, we're going to be specifically focusing on installation for Mac OS with Apple Silicon. If you are interested in the installation instructions for Linux and Windows, I would recommend you to watch this video. Now, in this video, we are not going to be using the one-click installer because I have found it to be buggy when it comes to M1 and M2 processors. Instead, we will be doing a step-by-step -step installation. To start our installation process, first we need to actually go and clone this repo. So for that, you go to the top of the repo and click on this green button. You will see this link. Now copy this link and open a new terminal. So here, uh, let me type in ls. So this gives me a list of all the files and folders that are present in the current working directory. I want to move to uh, the documents folder, so I'm going to type in cd documents. Now, in order to clone the repo, so I'm going to type in git clone, and then the repo uh, link that we just copied. Now, by default, if I click enter, it will create a folder with this name, uh, text generation dash webui. But I want to put it in a custom name folder, so I'm going to call it uh, text gen. And this click enter and it will start uh, copying all the files from the repo. Now keep in mind for this to work you will actually need to have git install on your local machine. Alternatively if you do not have git install then you can actually go to the same code button and download the repo as a zip file as here and then unextract it and uh, work with that zip file. Okay so we're going to go back to our terminal again. I will simply type in clear so that it will remove all the text that we had so far. Next, we need to create a new virtual environment. So I will be using Conda for this. We'll type in Conda create dash n and the virtual environment name. So I'm going to also call this text gen. Uh, I already have a virtual environment with this name, but in your case, it's going to be different. Then, and this is the most important part, you want to define uh, the Python version that you want to use. So for this specific case, I'm going to be using Python 3.10.10. Uh, now you might be thinking where is this coming from? Uh, so this is coming from one of the issues that was created uh, specifically for installation on Apple Silicon. And here this person is recommending uh, Python 3.10.10. So let's go back to our terminal. I'll just hit enter and it will start creating the uh, virtual environment for you if you do not have. In this case, it's simply asking me, uh, there is an existing Python version virtual environment with this name. Do you want to remove the existing environment? So I'm gonna type in yes, and let's wait for it to remove everything. And then it's asking me whether uh, I want to actually proceed with the installation of, so I'm going to type in Y, and let's uh, start the installation process. Okay, so the installation process is complete and now we need to activate our virtual environment. So we're going to be using this specific code segment, which is conda, activate, and then uh, text gen. Now notice here, instead of base, it's going to change to text gen. Okay, so I simply clean uh, my terminal again. So let's type in ls, and here's the folder uh, that we just created using the get clone command. Now we need to move to that folder. To in order to do that, we will type in cd, that is change directory, and then type in text gen. And if we type in ls, it will show us uh, the contents of this folder. Now the content of the folders are going to be exactly the same as uh, the repo on the GitHub. So now let's go back. Next, we need to install all the required packages and they are here in the requirements.txt file. Uh, so in order to do the installation for that, we will actually need to type in pip install dash r and requirements.txt. 
actually let me show you uh, one more thing before this so sometimes uh, when you are working with virtual environments it may not pick the right virtual environment uh, so you can check which python you are using so you can type in which python and then it will tell you the path where the python uh, virtual environment is located so in this case we are using the right one so it shouldn't be an issue however i would recommend to use this python m right and then pip install dash r in the requirements.txt so in this case it will make sure uh with this command that it's using the corresponding virtual environment python so let's wait for it so it's simply downloading all the required packages and installing them on our local machine so the installation is complete however we need to do one more thing so we actually need to go back and install uh, a specific pytorch version uh, this is the nightly version that works with apple silicon m1 and n2 processors so we're going to go back to our terminal and type in the command that we just copied i'm going to just paste it and hit run now keep one thing in mind that in this specific case the uh, virtual environment manager being used is different than conda so just skip this step and install it using conda okay so the installation is complete now we are all set to run the script so i'm going to type in uh, ls again now there is this specific uh, file that we need to run and that is the server.py however we need to make one more change before uh, running the server now to get the most out of the hardware that i have we will need to set a number of threads uh, so i have a m2 max that's why i'm going to be setting threads to 8 when i'm running the server.py file for your specific case set it accordingly okay so let's go back to our terminal again and now if I, in order to start the server i'm going to type in python server py dash dash threads and eight that will give us the maximum performance and we simply run this command now after running that command uh, so it will give me this local host web address that you can use to actually access the web server now you will notice that i'm getting a warning regarding the um, bits and bytes package uh, because that's specifically designed to run on nvidia gpus so i'm going to simply ignore this one more thing to keep in mind you can actually uh, create a public link so you can access your web server that i'm about to show you um over the internet as well uh, i will show you that in a later video so what we're going to do is we'll simply copy this and actually head over to our browser and paste it there and here's the interface that you're going to see now if you have seen my previous videos this looks very different because they have updated the web interface however uh, this is now pretty neat a couple of things that i really like about it is now in this input box you can define the uh, custom prompt template that you need for different models and we're going to look at a couple of examples in a little bit uh, but before that uh, we need to actually download a model so i would recommend to go to this model tab right now there are three different ways in which you can download models this is the one that i really like because it's the easiest one to do so let me show you how you can actually uh, download a new model uh, so we're going to move to hugging face and here uh, you can actually search for different models that you want so for example uh, if we go here uh, all you need is the link of this model but I'm interested only in uh, this Wakunya 13b the version 3 model this is the new model which was released just a few days ago so I will just copy this link go back to the text generation web UI paste the link here and then simply click on download now if we go back to our terminal you will see uh, the download progress is being shown in here so while this is downloading uh, i would like to show you some other options first and foremost is uh, the model loader so most of the models that you are going to be seeing you know, on hugging face they are based on transformers however uh, there are some other models as well for example llama cpp based models and there are even uh, quantized versions so if you're using auto uh, gptq for quantized version of the models 
So simply select this. Now here are some more model specific options. So for example, you can use a CPU to run them. Uh, if you download a full model the way I'm doing right now, you can load it in 8 bits or 16 bit version. Or if you want to unload a part of it to the GPU and part of it to the CPU, you can select uh, auto devices. There is also uh, an option to load it in four bits and so on and so forth. And you can also uh, use this trust remote code um, that will be required for some of the hugging face models. Okay, and let's look at a couple of other things. Uh, so if we go to this parameter tab, the most important parameter is temperature. So you want, uh, depending on your applications, you probably want to keep it to a low value if you do not want any hallucination in your output. There's this uh, top P, top K, uh, also repetition penalty. These are different options that you probably have seen. Okay, another uh, thing that you can do is you can actually fine tune your models uh, within the Ubabuga uh, text generation web UI. So I will be creating a few videos on this, uh, but you can essentially uh, take your own data set and just fine tune models with it. In terms of the interface, so if you go to the text generation interface, it looks like this. So you provide input here, it will generate outputs. And this works for um, instruct fine tune models. However, if you want uh, to have uh, something like check interface, you can select this, then click apply and restart the interface, and that will be converted into a chat interface where uh, you can essentially uh, chat with your assistant or your model. So I'm not going to do that right now because uh, we are currently in the process of downloading models, but that's an option that I'll show you later. Now, another very important option is actually uh, the uh, prompt template that you're using. So if you go down here, there is prompt and then you have a whole bunch of different options listed uh, in here. So for example, uh, we were going to be working with Instruct Vokunia 1.3, but it has a very similar prompt template to 1.1. So if you select that, okay, so the installation is done, then you're gonna see this message done. Now, if you come here and re-upload all the models names, so you are going to see a new model. So I'm gonna select this and this will load the model. Okay, so the model is now successfully loaded. By default, the interface is set to question answer and that's what the instruct fine tune models are. However, you can change this to uh, chat interface as well. In that case, simply select chat, apply and restart the interface. Now you will be able to uh, interact with the model as if you are chatting with it. Use this for models that are fine tuned for chat. Now let me show you one last thing. So I went, let's go to the prompt and here I'm going to select instruct Wakunia 1.1. Uh, this is the same prompt template that the Wakunia 1.3 uh, version is using. So you see it actually changed the prompt template for us. If I select another model, so it will uh, use a different prompt template. So it's a pretty nice uh, feature that they have included that you automatically get the prompt template that the model is supposed to be using. Now, another parameter that you want to set is the max new tokens. This is the number of tokens that the model is supposed to generate. So I'm gonna keep it to uh, the default 200, but if you want a longer response, you can actually increase this. Now to end the video, I'm going to be testing this model with this very simple prompt. So let's see what it can come up with. So I'll click generate. And this is the actual speed of generation uh, that I'm getting uh, on my M2 machine. I was actually expecting a lot from this model. However, here is what it came up with. Hey there, viewer of the video. We hope you enjoyed our latest video about the topic of the topic of the topic. And it goes into a loop. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider liking the video. And if you are not subscribed yet, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be creating a lot more videos using this new Ubabuga web interface. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.